Hello, this is Drew Collins, Rector of St. Andrew's Anglican Church in Savannah, Georgia. Today is the 27th of November, and it is the first Sunday in Advent. I uh, would invite you to pray with me now the collect appointed for today. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness, and put upon us the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. Here beginneth the 21st chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, Then Jesus sent his two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put, and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and and bought in the temple, and he overturned the temple tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, the propers, the epistle or the proto-epistle and the gospel appointed for the church year sometimes confuse us. Today is, of course, the first uh, Sunday in Advent. It is the beginning of the new liturgical year. And when we think of Advent, we think of preparation for Jesus' birth. But yet, for some reason, this is the lesson appointed. And it is the lesson that is read every year from in the prayer book lectionary, or the prayer book, the classic prayer book, and has been for hundreds of years. Uh, newer lectionaries have other lessons, but this is the one appointed, uh, if you use the 28 prayer book, or the REC prayer book, or the 1662, uh, I'm almost certain with the 1662, also, but this is what is read. And at first glance, that may confuse us. But Advent is a time of preparation, a preparation not just to celebrate Jesus' birth, which we will be doing, but also looking forward to his second Advent, to his return. And so it is that the church has read this uh, throughout the centuries. Jesus is drawing near to Jerusalem, and he comes to Bethphage, to, uh, to the Mount of Olives. Now, we don't know exactly where Bethphage is. The, the name literally means uh, house of figs or fig house. But we don't know exactly where it is. It has, it has passed out of memory. The exact location is unknown, but traditionally it was known or considered to be and, and thought to be in the east of Jerusalem and, and likely was. But as he's drawing near, he sends these two disciples and he tells them to go into the village in front of them and immediately they will find a donkey tied and a colt with with her. 
to untie them and bring them to me. And he gives them these instructions. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord needs them, and he will find them at once. Now, this story, this event, is recounted in all four of the Gospels. And each of them tell us something slightly different about what happened. But in in the account in the Gospel of St. Luke, we are told that as they were untying the colt, the owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? A very logical question. If if someone's untying your, your horse, you're going to wonder why they're doing so. <clears throat> and that they said, the Lord has need of it. And apparently that was enough, and the colt was released. A testimony uh, to uh, Christ's authority, and also, as we will discover a little bit later, uh, a fulfillment of prophecy. Now, it's interesting that Jesus came on a donkey, Now, when the rulers of this world uh, travel, they typically travel in fine style. Presidents most often travel in limousines, although I've noticed in in the past uh, couple of decades, the the black Escalade or the black SUV seems to have uh, somewhat displaced the limousine, although the President of the United States travels in something that looks like a limousine but is heavily armored and has the nickname of the Beast. It is actually on the chassis of a uh, truck considerably larger than a limousine. Uh, When the monarch of Great Britain, the Queen, until very recently, and and now, of course, uh, King Charles III, when they travel... It's typically in a Rolls Royce with the royal sta- with a small royal standard uh, mounted near the windshield, so that everyone can know that that is the king traveling. And of course, the Pope has his Pope mobile. Actually, there are numerous Pope mobiles prepositioned throughout the world uh, for when the Pope travels. But when people with earthly status travel. Uh, that is, they, they show that status. And so it was in those days. Typically, a ruler would would come riding a horse. Donkeys were seen as far more humble. Uh, they were the, the pickup truck of the desert. And I say that needing to qualify it a bit because pickup trucks have, through the years, become nicer and nicer, uh, often taking on the 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 uh, so many of the features of a luxury automobile but about 23 years ago or so I had a work truck now I it was uh it was bought used and it had seen its better days and it was dented and it had paint chipping and I'll be honest with you, I liked riding it. I have fond memories of it. I wouldn't mind getting another work truck. But as I told a friend of mine one time, or, uh, on, on a number of occasions I told friends, but I remember one time I was uh, a friend of mine and I were, were running some garbage to the, uh, to, the, to the dump appropriately. And I made a comment. I said, you know, if this were a car, I would be embarrassed to be seen in this. But it's a work truck. (laughs) And with that work truck, people just laugh it off. Uh, Or or not laugh it off, but it's understood. And you get a lot more forgiveness in a work truck than you would a car in that kind of situation. But that's not what you would expect a king to come riding in. And, and one, the friend, when we were riding uh, along, he was uh, one of the ministers at the church I was attending at the time. He made a comment, uh, some of the wear on the, the dashboard. He said, yeah, you know, in a, in a truck like this, this is just patina, uh, like like firearms or other, uh, other metal wear. When it gets a little bit of age on it, you don't want to mess with the patina too much. 
But that was my that was my work truck. It was humble. It was not a vehicle uh, that I would want to pull up to uh, an exclusive club as a visitor in because they would probably tell me to go to the service entrance if they didn't, in fact, question my right to be there. But when Jesus came to Jerusalem, he came humbly. He did not come as one would expect a ruler to come, but the King of Kings and Lord of Lords came riding a donkey in humility. And we're told uh, why he did this, that this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. And the prophet Zechariah wrote, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a cold colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Everything that Jesus did was to fulfill, or it was fulfilling, the prophecies that pointed to the Messiah, to verify that he was the Messiah. And the Gospel of St. Matthew uh, uniquely was particularly written to a Jewish audience, and it is the most focused on pointing out the ways in which Jesus fulfilled the prophecies. And so the disciples go, and they did as Jesus directed them, and they bring this donkey and the colt. And we know from uh, from Saint Luke that they were questioned, and and they gave the answer that Jesus had told to give them. And so they bring the donkey and the colt, and they they put their cloaks on him, on them to make the ride a little easier. And most of the crowd is, are taking their cloaks and spreading them on the road. And, and others are cutting branches from trees and, and spreading them on the road. And the crowds that go before him and after him are, are shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. There is no doubt in their mind that this is the king coming into Jerusalem. It also would not have escaped the attention of the rulers. This is a victory procession. Now, it was not planned by the, those crowds. They were responding spontaneously. But this is a victory procession. And as he entered Jerusalem, the whole city is stirred up saying, Who is this? They're wondering what happened. This caused a stir when he enters. And the, the crowds say, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And when Jesus gets there, he goes into the temple. And immediately he drives out all who bought and sold in the temple. He overturns the tables of the money changers. The money changers were there because the offering had to be given in in Jewish coinage, and so they would exchange uh, whatever money the people brought for the appropriate currency, taking, of course, uh, a cut for themselves. They were making money or selling pigeons, again, at a, a profit, profit so that sacrifices could take place. But again, it had been turned into a commercial enterprise, and this disturbs Jesus. And so he drives them out, and he says, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. Advent is preparing for Christ to come. It is a time of preparing for him to come and commemorate his coming in his first advent, but it is also looking forward to, to his return at his second advent, at his return at the end of the age, when he will return in judgment. Now, when Jesus came the first time, he was on a mercy mission. And that mercy mission has continued to this day and, and will continue until his return. He came to give himself so that we who stood condemned before a righteous and holy God might have eternal life through his sacrifice. 
And that mercy mission is continued as, as the gospel is proclaimed and as, as those who don't know Christ, or as sinners, are called to repent and believe on Jesus and to have a new life in him. And as they are added to the church, a body of redeemed sinners, not a, not a museum uh, for whitewashed saints, but a, a body of redeemed and forgiven sinners. But there will come a time at the end of the age when he returns in judgment, when the mercy mission is over, uh, when, when it will be time to face our Lord. Now, none of us has a right uh, to stand before God. But for the believer who is trusted in Christ, they can stand there because the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice fulfilled all righteousness. We can stand there because of the work that was finished on the cross when his righteousness was imputed to us and when he took on our sin. Now the epistle appointed for today, uh, I did not read it in this recording, but I will now. now the epistle appointed for today is from Romans, uh, St. Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 13, beginning at verse 8. Owe no one nothing except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this you know the time, that the hour is come for you to wake from sleep. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Well, as we begin this Advent season, and this year we have a full four weeks of Advent because of when, when Christmas falls. May this be a time when we, are, when we are putting off our flesh and putting off our sin and putting on more and more Jesus Christ. Because know this, Salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed, and the night is far gone and the day is at hand. I, Jesus will come again. I don't know when, but by his grace, when he does return, may we be found faithful. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, amen.